Hi. Today I thought we'd do a little bit of a uh, continuing video here of our uh, X-ray series. Um, some of you may find this interesting, some of you may not, I'm not sure, but anyhow we're going to talk a little bit today about how an X-ray is taken, how, how you can record the X-ray. Okay, we talked a little bit about the X-ray tube and how it works and the generator and then we went out in the field and uh, actually got to sit in on a calibration of an x-ray generator. Today we're going to learn what happens once the x-ray leaves the machine and goes through the patient. How do we pick it up? So we're going to start at the beginning in the early days. Uh, originally the way a radiograph was taken was using something that looks kind of like this. Now this one's kind of crusty and beat up and the hinge on the back is broken as you can see but this is a complete cassette. This is called a radiographic x-ray cassette and this would be the thing that actually holds the film. So the x-ray technician would open this up, place a piece of film in here and it would be sandwiched in between these two white sheets here and these are actually called intensifying screens. What they do is when radiation strikes them they will actually light up. So it converts an x-ray photon into light. And that light is a pretty much like a neon green color. Um, and that green actually reacts with the emulsion on the x-ray film and causing the image. Now, how does that work? Well, if you look here, I have an actual light. This is a visible light, as you can see. And if I take my hand and I place it under that light, as you can see, it makes a shadow. So wherever the light is being blocked or absorbed by my hand, no light gets through. Wherever there is no hand, light gets through and shines onto there. X-ray works in a similar manner. The only difference is an X-ray has the ability to penetrate objects like your hand, okay? so we would adjust the x-ray in such a way that it was strong enough to penetrate the soft tissue of your skin but not strong enough to penetrate the bone. So what happens is the bone absorbs the radiation and the skin the radiation penetrates and what it will do is it will cast a shadow just like I'm doing with this visible light of the bones onto this screen. When this screen gets hit by that those x-ray photons it lights up that green shade and of course being in a sandwich both sides light up so that gives you double light and it will expose the film just like exposing the film in a camera with light. Okay, and That's all that's really happening inside here so this is a large size cassette. It's 14 inches by 17 inches roughly. They make many different cassette sizes. Here's a 10 by 12. It's the same thing. And if you notice, inside here, you have a little window. And that window actually can be moved over. And it, leave, it opens up and you put it in a thing called a film flasher and what that does is that'll have a little punch card, a little card that will actually project the patient's name, the doctor's name, the study, the date, whatever. And then so in the corner of the film you have the patient information and then on the rest of the film you have the actual x-ray. So that's pretty much all there is to taking a radiograph and this is the way it was done for many 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 years from you know, early 1900s all the way up to modern times. They're still using these in some places. Now later on we evolved a little bit to a new technology and the new technology we call computed radiography or CR. Still using a cassette similar to this, still has screens in it similar to this, but instead of putting a piece of film in here, what we're putting in is pretty much in what we call an imaging plate. 
Uh, think of if you take the drum out of a photocopy machine and you straightened it out, okay? And you statically charged it, kind of like you do with a, with a uh, you know, with your uh, uh, photocopy machine. So you put that inside here. Once again, radiation strikes the intensifying screens. They light up and they expose the imaging plate. We take the cassette, which would have an opening on the top. You would place it into what's called the reader. It's a, a scanner, pretty much. It would pull the imaging plate out, run it through a scanning device, and scan the image off of it, at which point that image would be digitized, so you'd have a digital image, and it would place it onto a computer monitor and you could actually see a digital representation of the x-ray. So that was our first kind of digital x-ray, how we digitally acquired ra a radiograph. Doing away with the old film, uh, you no longer have to take the film out and put it in a film processor and you know put it through the chemistry, the fixer, the developer, all that sort of thing, and the dryer. You're now just digitally scanning the image. And that was pretty big from, oh, the late 1990s up until several years ago. Then a new technology came about, and this is what we're going to talk about today the most. This is our new technology that's cutting edge today. We call this a DR plate, or a DR de detector. Okay. DR doesn't stand for digital radiography, it actually stands for direct radiography. The reason we call it direct is because it takes the image and directly converts it into a digital image. No more uh, putting an image on a, on a plate or a film or something and then scanning it or whatever. The image is digital as soon as it comes out of this. Okay. Same thing happens. We take our x-ray, it casts the shadow. That shadow goes on to something in here. And believe it or not, as tiny as this thing is, and thin as it is, it looks the same size as a cassette. We'll talk a little bit about it here in a minute. There's two major devices in here that allow this to happen. The first thing that's in here is called a scintillator. And a scintillator is called that because it scintillates when radiation hits it or it gives off light. Okay, it gives off little particles of light, little bits of light. It glows. Okay, uh, there's basically a couple different types of, of material that will glow. Um, the two main ones that are used are cesium iodide, in case anybody wants to know, and gadolidium oxysulfide, okay, or gadox. Um, both of them do a good job. Cesium iodide is a little more sensitive to radiation, so it can light up with a little bit less dose of radiation to the patient than the GADOX can, but they both work very well, both diagnostic quality. Then, once that scintillator lights up with the radiation, then you actually have a, a pickup or a converter underneath it, um, or a TFT, that basically takes that scintillated image and converts it into an electrical current, okay? Or kind of like a CCD camera does. Um, CCD camera sees light and it converts the light energy into electrical energy. And that electrical energy therefore, there, thereby is converted into an image, okay? Similar technology. So, and this is all happening real time. Now, also inside of this, you may have caught a glimpse of it, is a button and three lights and a place for a lithium polymer battery. This actually has a computer in it, and that computer is probably about the, about the computing power of a modern high-end smartphone. Okay, so think of it as about that. And software similar to a Linux type software. So when we put a battery in and boot this up, this would boot up. This is a bad panel by the way, so I can't demonstrate it. I may I do have some videos of uh, us doing a 
doing a test on one of these. Maybe I'll put a little clip from that at the end of this image so you can see it. And basically this will boot up. It will wirelessly link to the workstation computer using Wi-Fi. Um, and yes, it uses standard 2.4 gig or 5 gig uh, gigahertz Wi-Fi signal. And it has memory. It can take up to 20 images and store them in memory in here until it sees that computer on the Wi-Fi and then it will transfer or stream that image over to the computer. The computer will then do a little bit of number crunching and turn it into a digital image. All of this happens in about eight seconds. So you take the exposure and within eight seconds you have a total image. When we talk about these older systems, think about it. You'd have to go into a dark room, open this up, put a piece of film in, close it up, leave the dark room, put this into the room, place it under the patient, take it the x-ray, take this back out of the room, go back into the dark room, take this film out, put a new film in, take your exposed film, place it into a, into a film processor, and then the film processor took about a minute and a half to process the film. Very, very long process compared to eight seconds. So eight seconds, I have my image, I'm looking at it on a monitor, I don't have to leave where I'm standing at the x-ray machine, and all I have to do is roll the patient into the next position, I don't touch the detector, I take my next exposure and I have my next image eight seconds after that. Much, much faster, much better image quality, much more efficient. Okay, So this is actually really a breakthrough in technology. It was a big change for all of us x-ray guys to have to go through because of uh, how different it was. Just the whole workflow of how this thing works and everything. So that's pretty much where we are today in a nutshell with x-ray. And this is how you acquire the image. So if you go into a modern, some of the bigger hospitals, some of the smaller ones still have CR and even film, but most of the bigger places now are now digital technology. Now this is what's called a portable detector because it's wireless, runs on a battery, and can be carried around anywhere and placed anywhere. Uh, there are also fixed digital detectors. They're a little bit thicker. They're maybe about an inch, inch and a half thick. And they permanently install inside of the x-ray table that you would lay on or the wall stand that you stand against for a chest x-ray. It's permanently installed in there. Um, and those are usually 17 by 17, so they even have a bigger image. So, uh, and usually they cost less because the smaller technology costs more than the larger technology. Uh, just kind of like you can buy a much higher end desktop computer for the same price as a much lesser powerful laptop computer would cost because of the micro technology. So I hope this uh, was interesting to some of you. Um, like I said, I'll go through some of the video I have. I did an education video for some of my employees on uh, doing an image evaluation, a QAQC evaluation on this detector. And maybe just so you can see how this works when it's in action, I'll take some clips of that and put it to the end of this video. Uh, hope you like this, and we'll continue with the X-Ray series videos here as I get time. Things that are really busy at work right now, but uh, we get some time to do some videos, we do them. And uh, if you like this, give me a thumbs up, and uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Have a great day. Thanks. All right, skipping ahead here a little bit. So we took an image, DI is 0, 0.0, technique turned out to be 100 at 20. And we see one, two, three, four, five, six discs. We see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, squares. And then we basically used the zoom tool and the pan tool to zero in on the line pair phantom and that turned out to be 3.7 line pairs per millimeter. We entered all that data in here. We skip over the jitter because that's for CR, so we're going to put NA down here. And then light to x-ray field, we're just going to use our normal fluoro screen and do that like we would any other radar. 
And that is the test in its entirety.